Good morning and welcome to Peace Out, where we are all figuring out and learning together to peace out. I think we're learning it faster. I hope we are. I've had some ex lots of uh, opportunities to practice this week, and I hope you have too, right? And I hope that in those circumstances that came your way, that you were able to go, oh, time out. God is here too. Lots of stuff. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> uh, draw. Yeah, I hope that you've had uh, the, that in those opportunities, because we have them every day. Every day is a choice to either trust God or not. It really is. It's, it's like it's cyclical, right? All day long. Am I going to trust God with this? Or am I going to freak out first? Well, usually I freak out and then figure out how to trust God, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the process, right? It's like, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, God's still here. God still got me. I still got his peace. His peace didn't leave because I got that bit of information because this changed, because that changed. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. God's peace and God is still here. Okay, before I get too far into the devotion, this week's book of the week is the James Study Guide, which is right now that we have a pastor who's agreed to cover the printing cost for this book in Pakistan that's been translated into Urdu. Is That just blows my mind. That's just great. Now if we can just find somebody to cover the making of a leader, that's the next one coming up. We've got to make more copies. We've already distributed almost 5,000 copies of that. And now we're out and we need more. So that that has blown my mind. I will tell you that right now. But that's cool. Anyway, so you can grab a copy on Amazon or on buymeacoffee.com uh, backslash Jeannie Olinger. You can buy a copy of the James Study Guide. Uh, Ebook, Kindle, print, uh, uh, Kindle and print, of course, on Amazon. Anyway, so... Uh, I kept thinking, you know, I told you yesterday when we talked about Jeremiah and when he was in the pit and God showed up in that pit, it said, when I cried unto God, he came here, he came near, right? And so I kept thinking about that. And I was like, that is just amazing that God didn't say, no, the pit's too deep. No, the pit's too dark. When you get out of that pit, call me, I'll come help you. It said, when Jeremiah said, when I called on God, he came, he heard me, that's so important to know, and he came here, he came near. And so I've been thinking about that ever since yesterday, 24 hours that's been on my brain, right? In my brain, running around in my brain, just thinking about it. And so then I started thinking, God kind of has a habit of, these. He, maybe he has a dark habit, we can say it that way, and of course that's tongue in cheek, but he has a dark habit of showing up in pits, in dark places in the back of caves, in prison cells. Yeah, we have a record of it, right? So it's kind of like, I guess if I give this a title, it would be Pits and Dark Places or Where God Hangs Out, or God Has a Dark Habit. <laughs> he hangs out in dark pits. That's where he comes to. Because we had Jeremiah yesterday, right? And he said, I prayed to God and God came near. He said, I was in a pit. It was in a dark place. It was a hard spot. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it, but I called out to God. He heard me and he came near. But we also have Jonah, Jonah, we talk about Jonah a lot because he actually sinned and found himself in a dark spot, right? He did, wasn't being persecuted for believing in God. He wasn't being persecuted uh, like uh, Paul and Silas will talk about in a second. You know, he wasn't being oppressed. He just flat out disobeyed God, ran away, and God prepared a fish. And so he was there because of his disobedience. But Jonah said, when I lifted my voice to God, he heard me. And he met him in the belly of the well. And Jonah was there by his own, his own sin. And his own, he ran away from what God told him to do. And yet God met him right there. That is so comforting to me because not only do I, you know, of course I mess up. I don't normally do it on purpose. I don't know. Normally my, my MO isn't to say, oh, God wants me to do this. So I'm going to do that. I, that's not my normal way to do things, right? Although I do mess up, I do make mistakes, I do make wrong wrong choices, or I, I think maybe I shouldn't, but I did, and now I'm in a bind, right? But God shows up in those too. We see that in the story of Jonah. God didn't say, well, you got yourself there, so get yourself out, <laughs> right? No, it said when he, Jonah said, when I lifted my voice and my eyes to God, God came near, God met him there. But then we have others. We, have, we talk about David a lot, Psalm 31. He's in a cave. God heard my cries, he says. God heard him in the back of the cave. Then we have, I thought about uh, Gideon. Gideon was hiding out. He was, they were being oppressed by the Midianites and he was hiding out, threshing the sweet so that the Midianites wouldn't, wouldn't steal it. So he's hiding. He's, he was doing it in the dark of night, probably in the middle of the night. Who knows what kind of lighting he had or didn't have, but it was a dark, 
place because he had to do it at night so that he didn't get spotted. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him. See this habit of God just showing up in the dark places? Then we have then we have Paul and Silas in Acts 16. And they were preaching the gospel, thrown into prison, put in stocks and bonds, put in the inner prison with extra guards so that they wouldn't couldn't get out. But what happened? They were singing God's praises in that dark spot in their life. It said after midnight, the, you know, who knows if they even doctored their wounds or not, but they're sitting in they're sitting in a prison after midnight. And, and they're, they're being persecuted. They have been beaten and they're sitting there and they began to praise God. And they're not just saying, well, praise God. Oh, no, we need to thank God in all things. No, they were singing the praises of God in the prison cell in a dark spot. Right. And what happened? God showed up, clapped his hands. The chains fell off. The doors flew open. The prison guards like, I'm going to kill myself. He's like, no, 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 we're still here. And he actually ended up, he got saved. His household got saved. They went out of the prison and ate a meal. They do, were, Their wounds were doctored. And the whole family, Cornelius' whole family was saved in that moment. God has a habit of showing up in the dark places, right? Then we have Joseph. Joseph's thrown in a pit. He was thrown into prison for something he didn't do besides being thrown in the pit when his brothers betrayed him when he was younger. He, but you know what? God did not leave him in either pit, <laughs> either one. As a matter of fact, at the end of his life, he said, what you meant for evil, God took for good. So the pit is an uncomfortable place. The pit can be those dark places in our lives. The pit can be the struggles we're going through. But it's a perfect place to defeat the enemy. How do I know that? Well, I have this other story I wanted to talk about. The guy's name has been Ai. I guess I'm not sure how to say it. Okay, but it's in 2 Samuel 23. And it says he chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day and barehanded killed it. I don't know what the lion did to tick him off, <laughs> but he said, You ain't messing with me today. And he chased the lion into the pit and <laughs> killed the lion. Who does that? And not a, it was a snowy day, everything was against him. He was going into a pit where he couldn't see. It was a snowy day. That means it was cold. And you know how your hands get, your hands like get, when you get, your hands get cold, they get stiff. It was a cold day because there was snow on the ground. And he was in the pit and he killed the lion right there because God gave him strength. Here's my point. My point is God's not afraid of scary places. God's not afraid of dark places, even if it's our own decisions like Jonah that get us there. If we make all the bad decisions possible and end up in a bad spot, God doesn't go, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be over here when you decide to fix it. No, he meets us in those places. It's a setup, like for Benaiah, it's a setup for God to flex his muscles and say, you know what? I still got you. You know what? I'm still with you. You know what? I'm going to carry you through this. You know what? I didn't take my peace back. I didn't take salvation back. I didn't take the righteousness I clothed you with back. Even if we did dumb stuff like Jonah, right? God never, I don't have a scripture where God said, that's it. That was the last straw. I am not. Nope. That's it. <laughs> We're I'm done. There's not one. He didn't abandon anyone in the dark places of their lives, in the struggles of their life, in their difficulties at all. He was with them. And so here's why Jeremiah this is a totally different chapter. Chapter 16, Jeremiah, the one we started with in the pit yesterday, and we're still talking about him today. He said this, Lord, you are my strength and fortress, my refuge in the day of trouble. Isn't that almost exactly what David said in Psalm 46, 1? Right? He said, God is a very present help in the time of trouble. He said in Psalm 18, God is my rock, my fortress, my strength, my salvation. And here's Jeremiah saying the same thing. Lord, you are my strength and fortress, my refuge in the day of trouble. When we have trouble, it's not a sign that God left. When we have a trouble, when we have trouble, it's not a sign that we messed up necessarily, right? Moses, we've said this before, Moses was exactly where God wanted him when he ran into the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army started squishing him from behind. He was between, literally behind between a rock and a hard spot, right? He didn't have any way to go, but he was exactly where God wanted him. Why? Because he had a lion to kill. He had a seat apart, right? With, with Paul and Silas, he had people to get saved. With Jonah, he had a, 
a city that needed to be to hear the good news that God had God wanted them to repent and come back to him and they did right God always has a bigger God sees the bigger picture even if we can't see when we're in our pit God can still see he's not blinded by our darkness he's not in captive by our own captivities he is still our strength our fortress and our refuge in the day of trouble and we can still peace God hangs out with us in our dark places. He doesn't abandon us there. I love that about God. So today I'm going to just keep thinking about this because it's such good stuff. And I'm going to peace out. Peace out, you guys. Have a great day. God is with you right now. And he ain't got nowhere to go. I'll see you again tomorrow.